Tonight, Arm Holdings, the newly public semiconductor design kingpin, reported its first quarter since the IPO, and it's clear, I think, at least to me, they're off to a great start. Let me put this in perspective. For several quarters leading up to the IPO, Arm had negative revenue growth. This time, the revenue came in much higher than expected, up 28% year-over-year, year, because many more chips are being sold that use the company's proprietary architecture. On top of that, they delivered a 10-cent earnings beat off 26-cent basis. Hey, get this, free cash flow up 400% year-over-year, bonanza quarter. At the same time, though, Arm's guidance was a bit noisy with what I regard to be a conservative earnings forecast. However, sellers are smashing the stock down because I think they don't understand how this company works. I think they're dead wrong, and people should be buyers, not sellers, because of how great the future is. There's nothing negative here when you consider what awaits you in cloud, cell phones, autos, data centers, and most important, artificial intelligence, where they are NVIDIA's key partner. Hey, why don't we take a closer look with Rene Haas? He's the CEO of Arm Holdings to learn more about what's really going on here. Mr. Haas, congratulations on a strong first quarter right out of the gate, and welcome to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thanks for having me. Okay, so it's first time on. So what we have to do is put you within the, uh, how about just the world of semiconductors so people understand how special you are both in your model of, of a royalty-based model and also all the different uses that, were, that will be being used as opposed to just telephones and handsets, which is what we used to know, yes. Yeah, well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about our company, which is um, not an easy one for people to, uh, to grok the first time out. Maybe the easiest way to think about it, Jim, is that uh, Somewhere, somehow, 70% of the world's population touches ARM in some way. So whether that's your automobile, the data center, your smart lock at home, your set-top box, and your digital TV, uh, you're touching ARM in some way. We're, we're known for smartphones, which is kind of the birth of the company, but now we're a much more diversified company. Cloud data center, as I said, automotive, IoT, uh, and of course, PCs and smartphones. Well, I think it's important for people to recognize your, your background is with one of our favorites, NVIDIA. Uh, you are a arm-in-arm -arm select partner with NVIDIA for some of the most exciting technology in the world right now, artificial intelligence. How did you get that? And is some of it proprietary in the sense that I know you burn cool, cool. Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, and you, I know, are friends, and you don't like to do things that hurt the environment. Somehow, people have to get their arms around this. That's really important to you. Uh, it is. You know, NVIDIA is a great partner, and, and yes, I, I, I spent a lot of years there. Jensen uh, is a great friend, mentor, uh, and boss. We, we do a lot of work with NVIDIA, and I think one of, the, one of the better examples in terms of how we work together and why we're a great partner for them is their next generation chip uh, called Grace Hopper, their super chip for, for AI. Uh, training takes a, a tremendous amount of compute power, which the GPU is very good for. But every GPU needs to connect to a CPU. You can't have a GPU without a CPU. And the CPU does a lot of work in terms of helping with the training, but also everything relative to the software in the system. When you're in an application that I just described, you need the most power efficient CPU on the planet. Uh, previously, they used to connect to external devices. Now with this great Grace Hopper design, they use 72 up to 144 ARM CPUs. And the reason why is, we're great at power efficiency. Uh, that's what we do. So it's a great combination. Now, I also think that I don't want to pigeonhole you to even that because I'm looking at this gigantic PC refresh. And I got to believe that ARM has decided you are going to take a big role in the next generation PC. Well, we like to think we already have started that. Uh, one one uh, major ecosystem and operating system has moved all of their platforms uh, to ARM, and we're thrilled. Uh, the Windows ecosystem is starting to move that way as well. Uh, the experience you get on these PCs, uh, great performance, low battery life, again, that's what we're really good at. Now, when AI starts to move to these edge devices and you start running things like the GPT agents that Sam talked about the other day in the OpenAI developer conference or Copilot from Microsoft, that requires uh, even more and more compute. And when you're doing more and more compute to support these AI algorithms, you want to do it as efficiently as possible. So I think we're into a, a, a refresh cycle for PCs and phones. But candidly, Jim, I think for all devices, uh, our quarter was, was so strong, largely driven by licensing revenue, which is an indicator for R&D investment. And what we're seeing now is really a, a super cycle of investment where Today's compute uh, requirements uh, are greater than what the capabilities of the chips have. So what does that mean? Uh, we're nowhere near good enough. So people are investing in more and more chips, more and more compute, which is, uh, which is good for ARM. 
Now, I know that there are people who are quickly reacting to a stock, uh, actually before the comps call, which is always dreadful. But more importantly, they look at what you've done with, uh, with, with handsets. They know that handsets are down, but they're just extrapolating. And also, because you have a very large customer that we tend not to be able to talk about, that, that, because that, that's just the custom of things. They're looking at you saying, oh, what, you know what? They're, they're stagnant right out of the box. Isn't it quite the opposite? You are, this is the beginning of a new arm. An arm that even if cell, if cell phones don't do well, can have extraordinary numbers. We were largely associated with smartphones, as you said. Now, today, less than half of our revenue comes from that segment. We are a very, very different company, very, very diversified. Combination of a strategy that we put in place a number of years ago to do that. But also at the same time, Jim, what has happened is the electrification of your vehicle, you now run on batteries, a car is a computer on wheels, that needs to be power efficient. That's great for ARM. We talked about the data center. There's also IoT, 5G, all these applications that, that use ARM. So for us, uh, I think just associating with the smartphones, while it's a great market, it's not the right way to think about the company anymore. All right, Grace Hopper, let's talk about that because that is probably, that is the most sought after next gen chip there is. It's an incredible device. There's amazing video. Every time I see the video, it's always ARM. And NVIDIA, I don't see AMD, and I don't specifically see Intel and AMD. I think a lot of people might think that uh, uh, Intel, AMD are, are fungible versus you. It, to me, it seems like you're locked in. Intel's out. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know about that. But what, what I would say is that the needs uh, for these large AI compute systems in the cloud require a lot of compute power, and they have to be very, very power efficient. Uh, when you're talking about hundreds of megawatts into a data center uh, and increasing that for these compute workloads, you want to squeeze out every ounce of energy that you possibly can. So that's why we've seen partners such as AWS with Graviton uh, moving heavily to the cloud. And we're seeing even more and more applications such as uh, SAP HANA running on Graviton. So even areas that are around uh, conventional applications where people thought, well, that's not really a good place for ARM, we're seeing a very rapid conversion to that. So uh, we're, we're really optimistic about our uh, growth potential uh, in the cloud. I think there are people who will look at the free cash flow that I mentioned and say, no, that, that's actually not possible. But the fact is, is you have an amazing model where uh, the, actual design, the actual making of these ships is done in typically a Taiwan semi. That's how you can have this kind of cash flow, right? Because I think people are going to think it's otherworldly. It's, it's a little out of this world. Uh, we sit completely in the semiconductor value chain. So all the companies we talked about uh, build chips or build systems. And as we talked about 70% of the world population and some hardware device has ARM inside, uh, yet we don't build anything. Uh, so what we do is we do the design and we design that CPU or a GPU or net NPU. And then we license it to someone who's going to go off and build a chip. Uh, my whole life has been uh, in semiconductors. And as you said, I, I used to work in NVIDIA and, and, and with Jensen. And when I came to ARM and I saw, oh my gosh, we've got no inventory, uh, we've got no scrap, uh, we've got no uh, write downs on uh, orders that we can't fulfill, what a great model. Uh, so yes, we, are, we operate at software-like gross margins but we sit inside the semiconductor ecosystem. Well, next question, I want people to understand that when you think of artificial intelligence, when you think of training, that's really key, training, we should be thinking not just of NVIDIA, but we really should be thinking always of ARM. Overstatement? Not at all. And in fact, when you think about AI, you should be thinking about training, and ARM is very, very good, as we just mentioned with NVIDIA on this partnership with Grace Hopper, but you should also think about inference. You know, inference is about taking all that training and then using it for real life applications. You know, one of the analogies I give is think of training as the teacher, but inference as the students. And students are essentially that take all that training workload and put it in a real life application. And that is where you're going to see the explosion of growth across AI. Uh, I know you're a big football fan, so am I. We're uh, two minutes into the first quarter of this game. Uh, there's a long way to go. It's going to be very exciting. Well, uh, at McCaffrey is the only person who can stop us, is what I have to say. Renee Haas it knows more about PCs and more about cell phones and more about autos, but really knows more about artificial intelligence than anybody I've ever met, save perhaps your mentor, Jensen Wong at NVIDIA. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your first quarter, which is a great one. And thank you for coming on Man Money. Thank you so much. Man Money, we'll be back here for the break.
Coming up, pop open those umbrellas and tee up your toughest questions. Kramer takes on all comers in the lightning round. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.